<laughs> this is the train wreck that we call Share Beer 336, man. That is perfectly <laughs> described. This is it, it is it, it train wreck is exactly it because sometimes that we find broken track and we ride right off the rail on this damn yeah, thing. That's right, really that's right, man. This thing will just <laughs> into the canyon. <laughs> into the canyon, man. We got Barrick from uh, old Florida and uh, just south of Mark there uh, in Georgia. And uh, what are we drinking today, Barrick? Maduro. Maduro. From Cigar City, their brown ale. That is a good one. And that's one of their staples. I mean, they have that all the time, right? That's one of the top four you can pick up anywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Florida, Cracker. Yeah. Florida Cracker, Invasion, High Lie, and Maduro are the four you can pick up anywhere down here. And if I'm not mistaken, it's one of the higher rated browns, too. I think it's, if there's a top ten, it's, I think it's in the top ten. Well, if it's not, it should be because it's amazing. Yeah. It's really good brown ale. It's amazing brown ale. I, I remember uh, who, who, Skyler, I sent him one. Oh. He, he said this is the best brown ale he'd ever had. I mean, as far as brown ales go, it's pretty... It's pretty tasty. Very tasty. What what are you drinking, Mark? I'm sorry. I am drinking... I don't know if you guys... Do you guys get this down in Florida? Uh, Monday Night Brewing? This is... uh, These are the guys that started their brewery off of Twitter. They did, did like, uh, meetups in their garage on Monday night, like, four or five years ago. Oh, I know. Like, oh, people would show up and try it, and then they, you know, they they put everything together a couple years ago. Now they're all over the place here in Atlanta. But this uh, is their their eye patch IPA. I think I've heard about that. I've heard of it, but I can't find it. And it's a very good beer. Um, this is yeah, this is their straight up IPA. I don't know what the ABV is. I think it's six six and a half. And then they've got their double pirate, which is their imperial IPA, that um, is just excellent as well. I don't know who that is. All right, telemarketer. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, um, later. yeah, I mean this this is all over the place. Uh, they're, they're probably the most popular beer here in Atlanta is the uh, Drafty Kilt, which is their Scotch ale. Oh, and it is. Uh, You're familiar with kilts. Yeah. Yep. The, <laughs> yeah. This would kind of, I guess what happens when you're walking down the street and the wind blows up your kilt. Depends what you're wearing underneath it, I guess. But, yes. Uh, yes. Scotsman, you know. Yeah. Okay. For lipstick under there. <laughs> 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 lipstick under the kilt. What do you want under that kilt? Lipstick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But, that yeah, is, they're, uh, a good, they're a good brewery. They do. They do a good job, and um, they're all over the place here in Atlanta. I don't know if they. I think they might distribute in Alabama and maybe parts of Tennessee. Now, is that is that IPA closer to like a fifty or sixty? Um, not one of those that's super super high IBUs, is it? No, no, it's well, I think it's like maybe sixty-five. I gotta put my glasses on here. I'm sure oh, it's going, going glasses. I'm going glasses. Glasses on. Light camera. <laughs> Light and glasses. Wow. Six point six point two percent. Wow, it's only forty-eight IBUs. Okay, and so six point two percent. So it's pretty. It's it's higher yeah. sessionable, but it's still yeah. sessionable. It's right at that, you know, yeah. pale ale, hoppy pale ale, not so hoppy IPA, but it's got a good balance. Um, yeah, I love the color. Very drinkable. Yeah, it's got a great color, great flavor, nice, um, nice color. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's a very good beer, and it's pretty affordable. They, they typically is eight bucks for a six pack here locally. Which is a dollar, two bucks less than most other craft beers around here. It seems like. Okay, and now that's you know that's a conversation that's kind of crazy. Uh, was it you, Mark? I was talking about the price of craft uh, uh, sodas. Oh talking. no, but I can imagine they're probably almost more than craft beer. I seriously just price some uh, craft. Hey guys, I just price some of that. Uh, you know the hard root beers, mm-hmm. dear God, man! You're talking nine, ten bucks a six right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, uh, and some of the sodas are just—they're bad. Like, uh, I, I mean, as far as price, uh, I don't—I don't know what goes into making some of these sodas. I—I I imagine they're really good. Yeah. 
But mm-hmm. man, you can't hardly get me to try them for you know uh, nine to twelve dollars a, a six pack, or in some cases a man. four pack. You know, mm-hmm. for eight or nine bucks. That's like an imperial beer thing. Like a four, a four pack. I will if it's an imperial craft beer. I'll pay like ten bucks or so for a four pack if it's a good yeah. imperial beer. Right. But ten bucks for a four pack of craft soda with no buzz? Come on. I Except mean, for all the sugar they put in it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I imagine you're getting some pretty real sugar. I imagine well, you're you, you, very well made, but man, that's you gotta I guess you gotta add in the hipster factor. You know, yeah. gotta price it so the hipsters will buy it. I guess it's gotta be expensive. I don't know. <laughs> No offense to hipsters out there. Yeah, no, if, yeah, and, and 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 I'll give I'll give it to them for. I mean, they don't have all the distribution obstacles. There, there's a lot of obstacles that are being that are, that are jumped over, right? Mm-hmm. Just because they don't have alcohol in their product. Um, so maybe there's a lot more. Comp- maybe that makes the competition harder. I don't know. I, I would seem to think that if you're making a decent product that you're able to get on a shelf easier, I would think. Mm-hmm. Um, but dear God, man, like that's, I don't know, man. That, that I don't buy Quality soda that money. much. So, yeah. so to get me to buy soda, like it, it just, I don't know. It's got to be cheap. Yeah, that's, you know? that's a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm not a big, so, I'm not a big, you know, soda or pop drinker anyway. I mean, I've had a few craft sodas and they're tasty. Yeah. Right. But I don't go out actively looking to buy like a six pack of the latest craft uh, soda. But you go to like any of like the candy stores now. Yeah. You know, the kids go to. I mean, they have all the candy, and then they've got a, a lot of them. Just have a whole like shelf, you know, big wall that's all full of different craft sodas. Oh yeah, no, it's really boomed and it's taken mm-hmm. off and 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 stuff. But I, I have a hard time trying it, and, and yeah. that's the, the reason why I, I I just came from the store earlier today. Uh, was thinking about getting some um, uh, some of that those new hard root beers. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And you know, at least in the store I was in, it was nine bucks. It was eight ninety nine for a six pack. You know what wow. I'm saying? And I was like, oh dear God, I ain't paying yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Not not for. I, I imagine they're good. You know what I'm saying? I've heard some mm-hmm. good things about the the uh, hard root beers, but uh, I don't know. It, it, the difference when it comes to like craft uh, liquors mm-hmm. to um, like a top shelf liquor yeah. is is not much of a difference. You know, mm-hmm. you're, you're willing to pay that extra buck or two for you know the higher end fifth of yeah. of spirits mm-hmm. um, because there's a definite difference there when you when you do buy uh, you know kind of Mid shelf or bottom shelf uh, spirits, but I don't know. I I I I I've had a few craft sodas, and, but the difference in price from your big macro sodas mm-hmm. to craft sodas is double. Yeah, macro sodas. Yeah, macro sodas, macro beer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what else to call it. Macros, I mean, that's I mean, they are. It's I mean, the same. It's the it, same thing. You got macro big, soda and craft it, soda. It, now you take, for instance, like a uh, a lager, mm-hmm. right? A good craft lager. Uh, the, the difference in price from a uh, a Budweiser or a Miller or a Coors is mm-hmm. not still not that much of a difference, is it? It's uh, not anymore. Right? What are you talking like seven bucks a six for maybe Budweiser, mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to maybe eight or nine for a, a decent craft lager? So yeah. Yeah. now the difference in taste, give me, give me please. But yeah. you know, uh, I'm just trying to talk about the price difference. Mm-hmm. It's, I think it's always been maybe two or three dollars for. Yeah, I mean, like your t- yeah, you buy a six pack of Bud for four seventy nine to five nineteen, you know that kind right. of thing. It seems like, and then your typical craft beer is seven ninety nine to eight ninety nine. You know, yeah. for, for most, although it's kind of edging up closer to nine nine ninety nine now, which is that's well, kind of at my pain point too. There's just certain styles you're just not going to get from the big macros, right? Mm-hmm. You, you, I mean, once you get past lager, uh, maybe a black lager, uh, um, I mean, they're, they're, what else is there really from the big boys? Uh, yeah. 
They've got um, Amber. Okay, they've got an Amber. Mm-hmm. Um, they, none of them have an IPA, do they? Uh, no, Is there an IPA? Really. No, I don't think so. I don't know. No, they've got like a red. They've got an amber. Right. They've got a pilsner, kind of. They got a lot. Lo- yeah. Like a regular lager. Right. Wheat beers. Maybe a wheat beer. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the light stuff. Yeah, lighter stuff. But yeah, you're not going to see. And you know, eh, not even really a porter. Porter stouts, not really. IPAs. Mm-hmm. No. I don't think I've ever seen an IPA that's in a true macro that has a macro label on it. Right, but right. I mean, you could you could go if you want to go one level down, and you could say, well, such and such is owned by. Mm-hmm. Okay, you start going that road. That's a that's a that's a long road of breweries actually. And right now, actually, I have a story that I'll put in the uh, chat here so you can see it as well okay. um, about another. Uh, acquisition that just Uh-oh. just happened. Um, we have Heineken acquires 50% stake in Lagunitas Brewery. Ooh. Brewing. Uh, Start putting some green bottles now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what's going to happen to? Uh, I mean, it's a 50% stake, right? So, um, wow. So it's a major. That's a major deal. Uh, uh-huh. That was wow. that was just released today, as far as I know. Uh, Heineken announced the acquisition of a fifty percent, fifty, yeah, fifty percent uh, shareholding in Lagunitas Brewing Company, the fifth largest craft brewer in the United States by volume. Uh, Lag- Lagunitas owns a stable of award-winning brands, mm-hmm. including the Lagunitas IPA. We've, mm-hmm. I think, a lot of us have had that. Uh, Lagunitas IPA is the largest uh, Indian pale ale brand in the United States, hmm. and it has a has become a benchmark for the category. Wow, I would have never really guessed that. Yeah, would and you? Probably, I wouldn't either. But it's m- most of it's probably on the West Coast. I would think something like Sierra Nevada IPA or or something like that would be bigger, but uh, or Stone, but they're not as big as Lagunitas. But, yeah, that's. Uh, I wouldn't have guessed it either. Uh, founded founded in California in 1993, uh, Lagunitas is estimated to sell one million hectoliters of beer in 2015. What's a hectoliter, man? Uh, hecto is like, was that 16? So 16 liters. That's like four. Is that four gallons of five? That's like five gallons. I don't know. Five million gallons of beer. I. It's a lot of beer. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. That one's better. Yeah, it's it's a f load of beer, right? Yeah. Uh, so they've got two breweries. The one in Petaluma. I did not know they had one in Chicago. I was I. Maybe I heard that somewhere, but I, I did mm-hmm. not know that. Uh, a third brewery is currently in construction in, in Azusa, California. Hmm. Uh, is that in the LA area, Azusa? Yeah, that's okay. still in the yeah. That's so that would be Southern one in Petaluma, California. that's Northern Cal, and then another one in Azusa would be Southern Cal. So okay. right. they would they would have two covered. You know, I, yeah, this is totally off the subject. Something that I just learned um, <clears throat> recently on another. Uh, trip to this place. <laughs> oh, seize. Seize candy uh, for those of you. And I, uh, they're, they're, I had a long conversation with uh, the lady that manages the Seize candy. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the original Seize candy. There's many of them here in Phoenix, but the original Seize candy that was in mm-hmm. Phoenix. And I uh, <clears throat> had a chance to talk with her. And she was mentioning that right now, the farthest east they go is, I think, Chicago. They finally got into the Chicago market, and they're trying okay. to get to the east coast, right? Okay. I was not aware that they only have two plants that make Seas Candy. One's in uh, Northern Cal, and same situation. That's what brought it up. That's okay. what made me think of it. And they have one in Northern California and one in Southern California, and they make all the chocolates, hmm. including the mail order in you know the internet and so forth. Uh, they make all the chocolates for all the seas candies throughout the West. 
Okay. Um, so she was saying they would have to make another plant uh, somewhere in the east to, you know, reach east because right now they're having all they can stand. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, they, oh, they make some good chocolate. But, oh, they uh, do. They do. Yeah, we, uh, I think we had C's. Oh, no, that was Colorado. I remember, yeah, C's in Colorado. I don't think it was ever in Chicago when we were there. Now, in Colorado, you have <clears throat> a, a new... Chocolate, right? The the Rocky Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory. Have you had their stuff? No, their stuff is amazing. Oh, their stuff yeah, is so yeah, good. their stuff is really good. They've got they do like a franchise or something, don't they? Yeah, there's some. I don't know. They started in Denver and then they kind of went yeah. out, but yeah, they are very good. They do a very good job. Oh, they're delicious. They're fantastic as far as chocolate goes. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> uh, I'll finish. Uh, I'll finish our conversation. I'll share the screen again about uh, Barrick. We started talking about Heineken acquiring a 50% stake in Lagunitas Brewing Company. Hmm. Um, that was announced today. Um, so uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess that was basically it, really. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as what they're, they just go on talking about how big Heineken is and. And how big uh, Lagunitas was, but I had no idea that little tidbit of information about uh, Lagunitas IPA being the largest uh, Indian Pale Ale brand in the United States. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's kind of weird. I wouldn't think them to be the largest IPA. Most, God. I guess by that they mean most sold, probably. Yeah. I, I wonder what, yeah, exa- well, that's another question, right? What does that mean, right? And they said Lagunitas reportedly valued at $1 billion. So wow. that's, a, that's a half a billion dollar uh, investment right there mm-hmm. by, uh, by Heineken. So, yeah. uh, you know, if they were ripping on uh, Budweiser for becoming German, then, I mean, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If, if German isn't good enough for them, they got to go California on us. I, I mean, you know what? What you know, Heineken's what Holland, right? So yeah. is that better or less or what? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's it's still not American. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so uh, you know if if you're gonna rip on Budweiser for for being acquired by InBev, then I mean, mm-hmm. there's a you know Heineken's acquiring a lot of people too. Yeah. Um, are, are they going to get equally? I mean, because they're still ripping uh, Budweiser over InBev, you know. Oh wow! Um, I don't know. I just kind of look at it like, okay, well, I, I keep waiting for the tidal wave to happen with these other breweries, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're being acquired too. So what's the difference? The way I see it. Yeah. No, they're, they're all all the big the big brewers are starting to you know the the craft beer is starting to. Uh, to get in on their on their turf a little bit, so they figure the best way to do it is just buy up the ones that they want to buy. That gives them the access to the beer and mm-hmm. the distribution and and uh, a cut of the a cut of the profit. Yeah. You know, if they're 50 percent owners of Lagunitas, then they can give Lagunitas a bunch of money to expand and distribute. And, right. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and I don't think I, you you know I think in the beginning I think these the the big boys were coming in. Taking over, and I think actually there was a lot of lessons learned from the acquisition of um, Goose Island, right? Mm-hmm. I think there was so much kickback on that yeah. that they learned, and actually they, they, they acquire a lot of these other breweries, and unless they really, really need the help, I think they're just kind of, okay, here's our distribution, here's some help with that, mm-hmm. here's some help with this, if you need it, otherwise... You know, we just want to cut. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Really, you know what I'm saying? Like, just we don't we don't have to use, so we get part of the money, basically. Right. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. You do what you do. You know. You know. Ba- basically, we just we just uh, you know, we have some of our people uh, sit in on your meetings now, I guess, and stuff like that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you know. As long, well, when I like I said, when I see Lagunitas IPA brewed in, uh, being in green bottles, and I know that the uh, assimilation is complete. Yeah, now you'll know how much of an influence uh, the Holland yeah. boys have on that. What do you think, there, Bert? If they have a skunk flavor, well, then you know really how much influence they have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If there's a definite, yeah, yeah, yeah. The green bottle. 
Or if they start bottling their stuff, uh, canning their stuff in skinny cans, then we know there's a little bit of an influence, right? Yeah. Like, uh, well, well, maybe Lagunitas will start canning more stuff. I don't think I see their stuff canned yet. I don't think so either. I don't remember that. I'm Do you get Lagunitas out there, Bert? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I. But I don't think I've seen it in cans. I don't think I think it's always bottles, right? I think they're still one of the ones that's uh, still still bottles. Mm-hmm. I think so. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've seen anything in cans either. That's. I gotta believe it's gotta be in cans somewhere though. If they're selling that much beer, they've gotta be doing canning. Guys, I'm sorry. I gotta go. I gotta make my own dinner. No problem, brother. But I want to jump on for a little while. Good hey, I brother. appreciate it. Hey, and we have to congratulate Barrick for uh, taking care of his feedback problem, so we appreciate Barrick coming back, yes. man. Feedback, Barrick. All right. Coming <laughs> back strong. Welcome back, my friend. Okay, man. See you next week, guys. See you. Yeah, out, man. Okay. yeah that's, that's true. That's right. I have no feedback. I mean, that's not – yeah. That's the first time in like six months. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's another reason why he uh, he, he finally uh, figured out that his problem was solved, and uh -huh. uh, he. Uh, uh, so let me see. Let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually. I'm just gonna really quick uh, try to find Lagunitas here and see if they are. Uh, uh, I'll let you guys look at this with me. I just want to see really quickly if they. Um, if they do, oh, see, see what I, okay, at least, let's see if they, they do, okay, then I'm not going to rip them, uh, it, being able to get into a website bugs me as much uh -huh. as no date on a beer bugs Greg, yes. so, yeah, is. it, that, that's my little pet peeve is, okay, when I'm ready to get in here, just let me in, you know what I'm saying, yeah, I'm yeah, a big yeah. boy, I can, I can handle it, trust me, yeah, yeah, um, not, not an issue. You're not stopping any miner from getting in anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, look, I mean, they're showing all their stuff in bottles. Yeah, they're not showing anything in cans. Hop stupid. Hey, and this is kind of interesting too, because wasn't it was it Lagunitas that was having those lawsuits? Oh yeah, the uh, the 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 font that they were using the for their IPA, they were going against uh, Sierra Nevada. Sierra wasn't Nevada, it? yes. That was like yes. three or four months ago, wasn't it? Maybe in the spring. It was earlier months. this year. Yeah. It was earlier this year, mm -hmm. uh, and they were making that big old stink, and and now they're owned by the uh, Dutch boys, right? Yep. <laughs> or part of <clears throat> right? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Well, maybe that'll help their distribution overseas, mm -hmm. I would imagine. I mean, Oh, yeah. Now, Hop Stupid, for those of you that haven't had Hop, hop Stupid, if you want a hoppy beer, a, a good IPA with a lot of hops, Hop Stupid is a very good one to get because it's usually, it comes in a big bottle mm -hmm. and it's like five bucks, five fifty for a bomber. Yeah, it, I mean, and it's just it's a solid beer. You can find it almost everywhere. So for you hop you uh, IPA lovers like a hoppy hoppy beer. One hundred and two IBUs, eight percent ABV. Yeah. One hundred and two. Yeah, it's it's it is it's one of the probably one of the best values in Imperial uh, IPAs out there. You know the price is just really really reasonable. Because a lot of times for a bomber of an imperial beer, you're going to pay eight to eight to ten bucks, and you can get I can get this all day for under six around around Atlanta. And I've seen it in other other states, and it's pretty pretty fairly priced too. Oh, I love this! I love the way they actually show their beer. So they're showing them the way that you can buy them, uh -huh. uh, and I like the way they actually list them here. So. They have unlimited release beers first. So these are the staples, the ones mm -hmm. that, you, just like you said, you can get these any time of the day, uh, wherever they sell Lagunitas by you. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's their limited releases. So yeah, it's like it, seasonal stuff. Probably. Seasonal stuff, and they show exactly what time of year they put them out there. Mm -hmm. So and depending on your beer store, some of them still have them available. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, it's just going to be okay. You know, this this is the last probably ten bottles we have, mm -hmm. but um, you know that's when they distribute it, right? Um, I have not had this brown sugar, and it looks like they're it's coming out. So yeah, that is a very good beer. Ooh. 
yeah, here's your uh, little something extra. Um, July, September. So this is available now. This uh, Imperial Pills, a bigger Pilsner is uh, avail available right now, as you can mm -hmm. see. So the, I love this. This is nice. This is really, I got to give it to, uh, here's the one hitter series, uh, January. And, oh, and they lo it looks like, you know, only available on tap. Yeah, so it's probably more local or where, right. they, uh, where their breweries are. So California and Chicago, probably. Uh, ooh, this one sounds interesting, doesn't it? Uh, citru, cit, citru sinus yeah, citru ale sinus. ale brewed sinus. with natural blood orange flavors. That yep. that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, this imperial coffee stout is one that uh, I mm -hmm. let's see West Rye barrels. Aged in high west rye barrels sounds a little interesting. So this is pretty cool, man. I I, yeah, I dig that. Nice, I haven't been on the website in a while, but yeah, they do a good job with it. So that was a nice little quick tour of one part of their website for you know for some people they they can check that out. Um, and then here's a here's another interesting one. This will <laughs> this this is definitely going to get uh, a conversation <laughs> uh -oh. started, right? Uh, so we have here, uh, let me share the screen real quick. Marijuana infused beer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, an Aurora brewery, right? Colorado, of course, yeah. uh, introducing a marijuana infused beer. And I have not read this either, but uh, this, so let's see, Denver Business Journal. Uh, an Aurora brewery is testing the limits of making beer with marijuana uh, next month. Uh, and this was a slightly older article, so this is from the 20th of August. So, yeah, uh, sometime this month, actually, you can is the way that one would read now. Uh, next month's Denver's Great American, and, and, and I heck, I think the uh, Great American Beer Festival. If it's not, if it is, it is it right now? I think it starts next week, maybe. Yeah, it's 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 about to happen. So, at the Great American Beer Festival, uh, Dad and Dudes Berea. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll introduce two cannabis-infused beers. Uh, the beers won't get you high because they don't uh, contain THC, uh, which would be forbidden by federal law, but they will include alcohol and cannibal oil. Cannab cannaboil? How do you Can say I, that? Cannabid oil? Can that cannabid oil, yeah. Or or uh, CBD. Okay, that's that my sounds much better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for 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 you know myself, that's much easier. Uh, which is produced by the cannabis plant. Uh, finding a legal hemp oil was difficult. Uh, locally cultivated cannabis uh, is not legal for brewers yet. Um, yeah. So it's something that's not local. And I wish they would have said more about the beer in here, but they just. Yeah. Oh, I guess you could read more by clicking here. Let me yeah. see what that what that does. Hopefully it doesn't. Uh, okay, here's a. Burr, burr, burr. Okay, so this is um, Mason and Tom here, and they, they own Dad and Dudes Berea mm -hmm. in uh, Aurora. Oh, so, looks like a brew pub type of thing, yeah. Yeah, and they've got. Uh, so here's a lot of their beers that they're brewing right there. Dirty Chai, Milk Stout. That sounds kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, a toffee porter. I would definitely order one of those. I'm telling you right now. Mm -hmm. uh, rum Force Rum. Uh, just from reading, just from looking at that picture really quick. Oh, so here you go. Let's see. Ba -ba -ba, so the owner of Mason Dudes. Da -da -da. The 24th. Oh, the 24th to the 26th. Okay. okay. So. so two weeks from this coming weekend. Yeah. But they still don't say like what beers. This is an even shorter article on it. So. Yeah. The, well, they're going to get they're getting a hell of a lot of press, so they're going to have a lot of people at their booth at the Great American Beer Festival wanting to try the the Mar the Marijuana beer. Right. Yeah. The, just the fact that you're brewing beer at the American Beer Festival with uh, with marijuana is going to attract a lot of. It, you have to make yourself stand out amongst the crowd mm -hmm. somehow, right? And amongst those three thousand beers, whatever we were trying to figure out a few weeks ago. Exactly. Yeah, so that's uh, leaves of lemongrass, Belgium, wit beer. Oh, that mm. sounds good. Heck, you know all these beers they have here sound good. Liquid resume pale ale. 
that dirty chai milk stout, man. That does actually sound good, yeah. That's got me curious. Uh, what is that? Uh, a vice? Oh, yeah, so that's a wheat beer. Peach. Um, then Green Street English Mild Ale. Okay. So, yeah, 4.7%. Uh, 22 IBU. So that that's a total uh, bottoms up beer right there, man. Mm-hmm. That's a that seems pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff happening in, in Denver area. So I mean, how do you go wrong there? That's really? Tough, yeah. I mean, if you I if mean, you love beer, Colorado is a good place to be. I mean, it's a <laughs> where else is there, right? I mean, yeah. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, California still is king as far as the the sheer amount of craft breweries mm-hmm. there uh but you know the i i don't know that they have the amount of like uh i don't know just colorado just seems to be where the movement is right yeah yeah oh it's huge i mean colorado's big uh portland you know wash um Oregon and that type of thing is still mm. huge, obviously. And, and now there's some some other states too, east of the Mississippi, that are starting to attract a lot of attention. I think Pennsylvania is one of them, isn't it? Pennsylvania is, yeah. I mean, it is. Um, oh, we went to a um, uh, a meadery, a uh, a place in Pittsburgh that makes mead. You know, so honey wine. Oh. And this, and this guy, oh, he does. So he has. We, we spent some time talking to him because we, we bought a, um, we got like a sampler of like seven of his different meads, you know, and they were anywhere from 7% to 15%. Mm-hmm. Um, but he has, he comes up with like a base mead, I guess, like the, like his base, which is about eight or 9% or 10% using, you know, locally sourced honey and whatever. And then uh, he makes a lot of the other varieties using that and then just infusing it with, uh, with fruits and, uh, that type of thing, and it was really, really good. Oh, really? Was it really? Uh, oh, um, what is the? I'm gonna. F- I'll find the website here. How many varieties did he have? He had like 15 varieties. <laughs> of wow, mead. really? Yeah, we tried. We tried seven of them. Uh, my brother and I. You know, Pam just watched and laughed. She tasted most of them, but um, but they were really good ones. And he, um, let me find it here. Um, what is the name? Aphis. Um, no, Aphis. Um, but it's a really good place. I mean, I was really, um, um really well, impressed it's, with the quality it, it, of the stuff. It, it, so there, it, I, I think as far as the East now, I've heard, oh, what are some, it's not like New Hampshire, but I know I've heard, uh, what it, it, well, I think. Like that general area, right? They're like New England somewhere. Mm-hmm. There's one of those New England states that has a big – I'd hate to like say it's just like uh, Massachusetts, but I know there's – I know there's some some craft beer brew, uh, some big noise happening in like Maine, mm-hmm. right? Um, gosh, I just thought – Vermont? Is Vermont – is there like some stuff happening in yeah, Vermont? There's like there. I mean, Vermont, New Hampshire – Rhode Island, isn't Rhode Island? Rhode Island's the one making some noise okay. right now, isn't it? Uh, Vermont, maybe. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, there are a lot. I mean, just in Pittsburgh, I mean, you got the meadery, you got a bunch of brew pubs that have opened up in the last four or five years. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's probably fifteen or twenty you breweries, know, it- breweries slash brew pubs or whatever in the Pittsburgh area, which is fantastic. Now, see, I don't, I don't, I don't think about it too much. And then with you bringing that up, because I don't get into too, I, and it's not, I, it's not that I don't like them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just that I don't try too many mead. So mm-hmm. I don't know how many mead breweries that there are out there. I mean, there's it's, not a lot. We were talking to the guy. Um, I'll post a link here. Um, Do they have their own guild or anything like that? Is there, is it that big yet? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's thousands of meteries, but oh, okay. um, there's like right. four, two or three. The guy was seen in the east, western Pennsylvania uh-huh. area. But um, let me go ahead. And, there it is in there. Apis yeah. Mead and Winery. Yeah. And um, and we did. Which ones have we looked at here? 
We did five or six different ones. Hopped pineapple was pretty good to summer selection. So I'll go ahead and share the screen here so people, other people can see it too. Yeah, so, so the Mellifera, that first one up top, the house yeah. meat, it, that's kind of like their base. A lot of stuff that is 10% or above, they use that. And then they, like the raspberry blackberry one he has there. Oh, yeah, 10%. Wow, these things are really stout, aren't they? Yeah, they're like wine. I mean, yeah. they're definitely wine. But there's some pretty good stuff in there. I mean, wow, really they really tasty. do have, uh, yeah, they really do. So so they have stuff that, they, it's just like a regular brewery, right? So mm -hmm. they have seasonals, a lot of seasonals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and he tries to do, um, you know, locally sourced wherever he can. He gets most of his honey from two or three places in the area. Uh, when you know berries and stuff are in in season, he gets he uses those. Boy, that tangerine ginger sounds interesting. That hopped pineapple there at the bottom was pretty good. Okay, that was kind of that was kind of interesting. Now, okay, okay. So when it comes to a mead, mm -hmm. is the hop stuff similar to a beer? I mean, is it? Uh... Uh, it's a different flavor. It's more like a. It's a lot drier. A lot of the meads are a lot. They're drier. Uh -huh. They don't have as much sweetness to them, uh, but you can get the flavor and the hops, like the hopped pineapple, you could definitely taste the hops, but it wasn't like an IPA kind of hops. It, was, it just had that kind of that floral, grassy oh. kind of hops, and then you got the, yeah. and that one, you got that, and then you got the pineapple behind it. Hmm. And, um, but the guy looks like, I wonder if there's a picture. He looks like... Um, <laughs> Um, Ben Stiller. Oh, really? Yeah, the guy looks like Ben Stiller, and he—you see the stuff on his uh, on the homepage there. If you go to the homepage, like the drawing he has of the mead or whatever. You know, Hunter Thompson. You know the the Gonzo journalist that did all oh. those illustrations. Yes. This guy, the guy that owns this, is is an illustrator, so he does all his own labels and everything. And um, but he looks like—I wonder if I could find a picture of him. But he looks like we're like, who that guy looks like somebody? And we're driving back. I'm like, Ben Stiller with a ponytail. <laughs> oh man, is that is that is that no no is that a compliment? What is that? Oh, if someone okay. tells ben you, Ben Stiller like, doesn't make tasty mead, so it's definitely yeah. Yeah. Is is that you know is that is that someone insulting you or is that no, a compliment? No, this, this, or, guy, this guy was very cool. He just looks like Ben Stiller. He just looks like Ben Stiller. But okay. he was much more laid back. He had a, he yeah. was just totally into it. He's a great artist. I mean, he has all the. Uh, I said, well, that's going to save you a lot of money on label creation. He goes, yeah, I just draw my own labels. Yeah. You know, for, cause it, he bottles stuff. He sells to like forty restaurants in the area. Oh wow! Stock is you know different varieties of his meat and everything. So. <laughs> It's so it, that's interesting. I, I I need to I need to I, I need to get more into meads, I suppose. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's basically it's just fermented honey. I mean, that's yeah. That's essentially, you know, that's where the sugar instead of malt, you know, barley malt or whatever, they just use yeah. the honey. The honey, yeah. The so D Bum is saying the last time he counted, he said there was over twenty breweries within a sixty mile radius of Pittsburgh. I believe it. I and he hopes it. you enjoyed your visit. Um, oh, awesome, awesome! Like I said, uh, once again, Pittsburgh's one of them towns that I do hope to get to someday. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I've been to Pittsburgh, right? But it was always, uh, you know, business. On, uh, you know, mm -hmm. as a truck driver, so I didn't get to, uh, you know, stop and hang out and check out a mm -hmm. bunch of breweries. And of course, the, the just the food you hear about all that uh, food, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, there's a lot of good food in Pittsburgh. Yeah, oh, yeah. you know, and and it's a, it, from what I remember from just driving through it, it's a beautiful city. It really yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a very nice area. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, just the cool working man's cities. You know, just yeah. uh, you know, uh, from what you know, what you always hear, and then just from the little bit that I have seen. Yeah, well, uh, it's it's a, it's a fun town. I'm uh, proud to say I'm from Pittsburgh, and it's uh, it's a fun place to go visit now. That's for sure. You know, Steeler fans are everywhere. 
Oh yeah. There you go. There's please, please. Yeah, you're in the Steeler fan mecca over there. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, you know, heck, you, you see Steeler fans here, oh, let man, alone man. uh, you know. Yeah. And actually, now the Pirates are doing well, so everybody in Pittsburgh's all on the Pirates, you know, because they, they actually got a chance. They're probably going to be a wild card, so they got a chance to. Well, Pirate fans are kind of zombies, aren't they? I mean, they've rose from the dead, yeah. and they're they're the living dead, aren't they? <laughs> they're like, <laughs> yeah. they're just kind of. Uh, they need to win. I mean. The last World Series is 79, so yeah, it's been a while. I, I, I believe you could just go around with a big hack, uh, a knife, and just you know hack them in the head, and they just go back where they came from, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not as bad as Cubs fans. Cubs are even worse. I mean, they oh, haven't since they haven't had a World Series in like over a hundred years. So no, Cubs fans. Uh, sorry, there's a hot chick walking through the window. Um, yeah, the Cubs fans are. The, the living dead it's not even a question right yeah yeah, yeah yeah they are the walking dead there so yeah it is it, matter of fact they just tape cubs fans and that's how they come up with the series right <laughs> <laughs> that's where they you know what i'm saying yeah Real world yeah, series. yeah it, it, it actually they didn't have to shoot him in the head or hack him in the head or nothing they just told him you're not gonna win dude oh yeah and they just fall back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they, they just mentioned it. What, what, what was that kid's name again that caught the ball? What was that? Oh, uh, Bartman. Bartman. Bartman, yeah. They just go, Bartman. <laughs> and they no, just no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Start drilling and... Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh he this is a this is a knock on you right here. Yeah, uh, Bum says US Pirate fans uh have risen from the dead, much like craft beers, uh craft soda, and vinyl record albums. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got two of the three there. Vinyl <laughs> and, vinyl records and uh craft beer. Yeah. <laughs> Pirate too, so I've got three out of the four. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> craft soda. I haven't really gotten into that. Yeah. It, it seems like uh the old vinyl record thing is really taken off. No, I mean you're is, yeah. you're, you're I mean, attracting a lot of attention with that stuff. There's right? lots of new stuff coming out. Mm -hmm. What's pretty cool is that they do have, uh, you know, getting totally off of beer for a second. They 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 are getting a lot of like USB type of uh, record players, and it's just making it easy for people to uh, sample their their mm -hmm. their vinyl, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And if you there's a lot. I mean, there's you know, if you're in a larger metropolitan area, there's a lot of record stores. You can get some good stuff. I mean, you know, yeah. it's still in pretty good shape and not yeah. too expensive. So. Yeah, and even if you aren't, there's still there's still a company out there, believe it or not, other than Amazon called eBay, and they sell stuff on there. <laughs> yes, that is true. You, get it. you know, so th there are people that uh, oh. you know dust off their albums and. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a niche market. I mean, it's never going to be yeah. mainstream again, but uh, it's kind of like film photography. You know, you got these hardcore people that are yes. into it. Yes. Uh, you know. Just yeah. enough to kind of keep it going, but not enough to take over the world or anything. No, not not taking over the world, just part of it. Yeah, just just right. a small part. Small just part just a world. small sample size of it. Yeah, it's a. Uh, um, well, uh, I don't know if that's a congratulations to Lagunitas or what that is, but I wish them all the best. Uh, with, I mean, they they have smart people, I'm sure. Um, you know, guiding their decisions. So, uh, you know, I'm sure they wouldn't have. Uh, let an acquisition like that happen if they didn't mm -hmm. need to well, or feel like it was a the smart owner, business. the guy who founded Lagunitas, is was able to cash out, make some, you know, get some cash in his account. You know, five hundred million for fifty percent stake. I mean, he's doing pretty good. <sighs> Man, you right? Know, like, I don't. Ching. Yeah, I don't. I, I absolutely. Uh, he could buy all the craft sodas he wants. Not then a. Not then <laughs> And vinyl records too. You can buy lots of vinyl records. And yeah, maybe he'll go in the craft soda business. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he's like, there's a future there. You know, yeah. maybe that's the uh, the you know the new thing. He's seeing the ratios there, and it's like mm -hmm. you know. Oh, but I I don't know what he. I mean, he he's the founder. Two fit. Yeah, he's got a chunk. He's got a chunk of change. His bank account just went up. Yeah, went up by a couple zeros. You know. Two or three, four zeros, maybe, you know. Yeah. I would have loved to have uh, heard Zach's opinion on it. I'm sure that's – he's probably actually sick of hearing about it, actually. The, uh, you know, 
Uh, well, it's, it's just going to happen more and more. I mean, the craft beer industry is to that point. I mean, this guy founded it in 93, so he's 23 yeah. years into it. You know, so he's like, okay, I've been working this for 23 years. I've built up a good thing. Now it's time to get cash out at least a little bit, you know? Yeah. And um, and there's going to be a lot of brewers that do that. You know, people that have been in the industry for 20, 30 years, you know, they're kind of to the point where they still like to brew, but maybe they want to kick back a little bit, reap some reward for what they built up. And You know, you know has does Sam Adams have any partners or are they still? I think they're still... All on their own thing, yeah. So that man, you got to take your hat off to them, uh, growing like they have it. And I think Dogfish is in the same boat, right? Yeah, like they're really the Stone they're, Brewing, Stone, New Belgium, and New Bel New Belgium. Uh, uh, Sierra Nevada is still independent. I mean, I think they're. Are they, yeah, Sierra Nevada is for sure. Yeah. Um. So that you got to take your hats off to. Uh, at least dogfish shit, as far as we know, right? And stone. I mean, th those are really big boys right there. Oh yeah, they're the crap. A lot of and they're yeah. they're worth a lot of money. Someone's going to stroke a check at some point, and it's going to be hard to refuse. You know, yeah, and I that's... I can't blame them at all. You know, I mean, if you put all that blood, sweat, and tears into building that and working, you know, working seven days a week, you know, hundred hours a week or whatever for all those years, and you know, I'm not, uh, who am I to fault somebody for? For taking a payday, you know. I mean, that's yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Whatever the hell they want to do with well, it. You, uh, yeah, no, they definitely don't consult this show. No, they should, though. Yeah, they, you know, they should. Like, hey, we're not. We're an international deal here. What are you kidding? That's me? right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Touch you. The pulse of the craft beer world. <laughs> we have our finger on the, uh, the yeah. Pulse of the craft beer <laughs> worldwide. <laughs> Yes, you know, just in case they. Uh, Bum and, Bum and Derek and a couple other people, you know, yeah. but we count. We're people yeah, hey, too. You know, hey, I pop my shirt to that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're mm -hmm. on the, you know, <laughs> we're on the bleeding edge. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, you know, we're probably actually you probably were one of the first share beer shows ever. Well, uh, there's a couple hard. others. Well, it's um. As far as this show doing what we're doing, yeah, we we were we, we literally because I can, one of the first and, and the longest running probably, yeah. I I can I can remember uh, a lot of the a lot of like the naysaying when it came mm -hmm. to starting something like like you know you know just having a share where we could a show where we could just sit and talk, mm -hmm. and and now it's really popular. There's there's tons of them. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, I'm not saying because of me. I'm just saying like the, you know, back when we started this, it could, well, mainly because there was hardly a way to do it. You yeah. know, that's that's exactly it. We, we yeah. were ahead of you were ahead of the curve a little bit there. A little bit, yeah. yeah it's bit. Uh, racing ahead of the curve. And, yeah, and, uh, it but was, yeah, it's huge. I mean, you got all the, and that was kind of like pre Facebook, definitely before Google Plus. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. And all that's coming, and now there's there's probably hundreds of shows like this, you know, at some point over the course of a week or two. Yeah, there's at least there's at least half a dozen that I know of right now, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I, yeah, there's got to be gobs more that I just have no clue about. Mm -hmm. It's 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 like reviewers, you know, review. There's a lot of reviewers out there, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's cool. I'm glad. I'm glad there is, man. That it just. Yeah. It, it just keeps the interest in, in craft beer going. That's all. That's what it's all about. Yep. You know. That is right. So it's uh, it, it's pretty cool, man. I'm glad. That, all good. Yep. Glad that people are still interested, and that's that's you know, and they're, like you, you know, once again, man, people want to write me. It's uh, uh, my email is Jody Reviews at Gmail, so right. you can reach me there anytime. Reach me through uh, Google Plus here. Or uh, through the YouTube channel, so it's uh, you know pretty easy. the uh, The number is 505-886-1514. If you want to leave a uh, message or a text, you're welcome to do it there as well. So, 1514, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna leave you like a text at like three. Well, three in the morning for me it was like midnight for you, so you're just getting going with your day. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you could. You could text me all night; it wouldn't matter. So it's <laughs> don't dare me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you doing? Set up on? I'm texting Joe. Oh, yeah, text him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd be like the Allstate commercial. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, 
What is Joe wearing? <laughs> uh, khakis? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, brother. I'll I'll uh, I'll let you go now. Uh, all of a sudden, I I swear to God, my emails went up to ten. That is amazing. Um, wow. <laughs> I'm not Congratulations! Even, I'm not even. All of a sudden, yeah, my my darn emails went up to ten. That's crazy. Um, so thanks, Bum, uh, Barrick, uh, Mark. Yep. Thanks, guys. Jump it Bum, in. Bum, always a fun time in Pittsburgh. I'll look you up next time I'm up there. We just got compressed for time this time i was actually thinking about trying to get in touch with you but the one day went away really fast so we will try it again next time it'd be fun oh. to share a beer with you for sure oh yeah no it's i'm just i'm just now communicating with uh other beer fans and so forth that are in phoenix and they're like mm -hmm. oh hell you're in phoenix now i didn't even realize you know well yeah you know, so it's it's just one of them. Deals. Me and Pat still try to hook up. I mean, you know uh, what I'm saying? It's just tough. one of them. Deals. I mean, it's tough. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, life gets in the way so often. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. But not so, on Tuesday night at seven o'clock Eastern. Tuesday the hell with life. We're just doing Tuesdays, beer. seven p.m. Eastern. It's it's really nice because you're in the convenience of your own space and yep. wherever your space may be, whether it be on your mobile, uh, whether it be on your home computer, wherever you want to be. We're mm -hmm. we're here seven fin seven p.m. Eastern, uh, every every Tuesday. Yep. So. All right. Okay, man. We'll see you. Peace see out. Ya. Take care.